Hey, I'm Jeff Vitolo. How you doing? Thanks for stopping by my channel. Appreciate all the love. Uh, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. Uh, there's some likes out there, some comments. Uh, we're going over this uh, series of videos I'm doing called How to Play in a Band. We're going to get started in a second. But first, uh, my sponsor for this episode, and uh, this is going to be like my first unboxing too. I've never done an unboxing. Of course, I don't have a camera on the box, but let's see who's the sponsor of this episode. If I don't cut my fingers off. Our first official unboxing. So today's today's sponsor for episode number three, ladies and gentlemen, is here you go, bro. Blue Magic Music. That's right. Get your Blue Magic strings. We're going to talk more about them later on here in the episode. Uh, appreciate all the love. Great strings. So now let's get into it. Today's episode number three. We're going to talk about jam rooms, rehearsal spaces, home studios place where you like get together or, or even by yourself where you get get in a place and create music you know um so we're gonna dive into this i got some guests uh they're gonna throw some pictures up of their places and stuff too we shout them out but uh the importance of having a jam room a rehearsal space or home studio um especially if you're in a band you know look uh i've had so many great experiences in all my jam rooms and all the places with bands and stuff I think about it like this, even if you never make it in the music business, the memories and the experience you're gonna have hanging in these jam rooms, like getting off work and wolfing down a burger and going straight to rehearsal or getting together with your buddies, you know, all the time, get creative and doing stuff like that. It's really important. Um, most of the bands I've been in, our jam rooms were like, we decked them out, you know, we made them cool and, you know, very inviting, comfortable. Um, if you're just by yourself in your home studio, um, that also is a good place for, to be creative. So um, make yourself comfortable. And the, the thing you want to do is get that creativity out. Um, set yourself, like my jam room back here is set up to where we can just walk in and play. You know, we don't have to unload a trailer, set other stuff up. Just walk in and play make it, makes it real easy. Same thing with recording and, you know, doing your songwriting. Get your setup going. Um, make some templates or whatever, do what you need to do so you can get right into creating. So, you know, jam rooms are a cool thing, whether you have your own, see, I'm in a, like a, a, a closed in garage here. It's my studio. I'll show, I'll show some pictures of it later or something like that. I might even do a whole studio tour one day. So I got a little, I got, you know, place where the band practices over here. I got my recording spot over here. So think about like a, when you want to get together with your friends or even if you're like recording and sending tracks to somebody else in another city or state or country it's it's a thing where you're you're going to have you're going to do the creating you're going to be you know giving birth to, to music and uh whether you're collaborating or whether you're doing it by yourself it's such a special place you know and it's such an important thing to have now if you're young and you're in a band why not have a band house I used to have band houses with a lot of my bands. They were like, a lot of times, that's how we built up our following, too. Have a great band house. You know, a few of the guys in the band or girls live there. You invite your friends over, keg party, have the band play. Boom, boom, cops come. Next thing you know, you got a bunch of people at your house uh, enjoying your party. So you call some clubs up and say, hey, you know, I got 40 people at my house. Why don't you book us in your club? And so it's a good way to, to build a following and, and get people to like you and hang out with you and stuff like that. Um, renting like a storage facility a lot of like being here in tampa since the 80s there's such a great uh storage facility called people storage it's off skip road and like every great band at the moment the death metal bands the rock bands every band had a place in people storage and it was such a cool thing to like to uh to go there and, and hang out with everybody walk around hear everybody and the camaraderie um, it helped it really built that scene up back then. And like I said, uh, it's just a fun thing to do. The creativity when you're with a lot of people and they're, they're being creative rubs off on you. At least that's what it did, did for me. As I do these videos, if you have uh, any, uh, any input on this, please leave it in the comments. You know, talk about your jam room, your rehearsal space, your home studio, the place where you're creative by yourself or with your band, you know. Um, I really get enjoyment out of having uh, 
my garage studio here. I've had it for many years. It makes it real easy for my band to rehearse and we record and stuff and, it, uh, you know, get together, have a great time. Like I said, there's so many great memories I have of rehearsing. Um, the shows, playing shows, of course you're going to have great memories. Traveling, you have great memories. But another part, uh, part of being in a band is the great memories that you're going to get while you're rehearsing and while you're creating your music, while you're getting your ideas across, whether you're got somebody that you're trying to get it across and they got something else they want to do. Well, that's, that's part of the yin and the yang. You know what I'm saying? That's part of uh, getting together and throwing ideas off somebody, you know? Um, so uh, let's get into this and talk about some friends of mine, home studios. Um, and if, like I said, if you got some pictures of your home studios, leave them in the comments. It's cool. We'll talk about it. I'll probably do another episode about this. I'd, I'd like to put pictures of home studios and rehearsal spaces up because it's, there's such a story behind everybody's spot. You know, there's such a story. There's so many great, like I said, great memories, great songs, great rehearsing, you know, getting different plateaus as a band or as a, um, as a songwriter or an artist. So um, before we get into that, let's, let's go ahead and get into today's sponsor. Let's talk about that, okay? We'll be right back. All right, once again, today's sponsor is Blue Magic Music. That's right, the creators of Blue Magic Strings. And I got a whole box of them right here. I just got, ooh, yeah, baby. I got some good ones. Ooh, I got the Chaos, too, for my uh, Les Paul Gold Top of the P90s. Let's talk about that. So great, great strings. So many people that uh, you can go to the website, um, bluemagicmusic.com. There's so many artists, and I'm, I'm proud to be one of their artists. I love these strings. Um, there's so many great players that have picked up on these strings. They're almost indestructible. Um, I've said this before in another episode. I live down in the south in Florida, so we have lots of heat, lots of humidity, lots of sweat, lots of changing uh, climates going from outside to inside. Um, I play very hard. These strings, I've never broken one of them. I've never broken one of these strings yet. I, and I trust me, I try. I think uh, the first one to break one was was uh, Wolfie. I think you can see that. I think there's something in the, on the website about that. What's up, Wolfie? Anyway, so there's different strings. You, you know, you got your your rock max output. You got your indigo acoustic strings, the vintage pure nickel, your apocalypse from you know your uh, like metal strings, I guess. Uh, you got bass strings, and of course, I was talking about these chaos strings. So if you're a P90 player. Um, these chaos strings are, are formulated specifically for P90 pickups. And uh, all their strings, you can get custom sets. If you like special gauges, your own custom sets, you can go to their website, uh, put anything you want, search around there, look, look, see the testimonials. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm a tried and true player. I play a lot of gigs, and uh, I'm the only guitar player in my band, so I'm definitely scared of breaking a string, you know what I'm saying? So these strings are tough. Let me tell you, they are tough. They hold their tone, and there's a lot of players that are jumping on this bandwagon, okay? Blue Magic Music, they're indestructible, I love them. So please go to the website, bluemagicmusic.com. I'm gonna be restringing my guitars, and uh, I had some comments. Some people wanna see some of my guitars. Maybe I'll start jamming on some of my guitars a little bit. Um, I got this flying V, I need to put some strings on. I'll bring that out. I'll show some of my guitars in other episodes. Anyway, do me a favor, go to bluemagicmusic.com. Check out, get some strings, see what you like if you're a bass player, acoustic, whatever. There are some great strings. Tell them Jeff sent you. And uh, do me a favor, leave in the comments when you get a pack and tell me how you like them. Once again, Blue Magic Music, thanks again for sponsoring episode number three. Appreciate it. We'll be right back. Yep, 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 yep. All right, let's get into some of these, uh, some friends of mine that sent their uh, pictures of their, their uh, spots to, here. I'm going to throw my, my glasses here. And uh, get a little readers. First band up, okay? My friends Linda Marie and Jason Lee from the legendary Cyclones. That's right. They got a cool spot over uh, the other coast by Daytona Beach. And uh, this photo shows, look, it's their house. It's where they live. And you could tell, like, they're, it's their living space. They're right there. Probably there's a, a kitchen off to the side, probably a little op open area. They got the drum set. They got the whole thing going on back here. Stacks of amps. You can see the cool guitars hanging up on the wall. And look, it's a, it's like, it's so comfortable. It's their spot, you know, and I'm sure that they've created and they've rehearsed and they've uh, done so many great things and, and have such great memories of that spot. 
And of course, there's a beautiful dog in the picture. So they, they win <laughs> right off the bat. And you can check them out. That's, that's uh, the legendary Cyclones. You can check them out on Facebook.com, Cyclones NSB, and their website is CyclonesNSB.com. I'm going to leave uh, links down below in the description for all these people's stuff. So, yeah, check them out, you know, the Legendary Cyclones if you can. Up next, good buddy of mine, Matthew Twinkie Downing. All right, brother, I'm going to talk about your stuff right here. So he, he sent me one picture, and uh, this is like this spot. So... And I know he's got a, this, this studio is a lot bigger than this little area, but that little area is pretty much all you need to do whatever you need to do. And, you know, you can see he's got his controller, his MIDI thing, and, you know, some old school like rack gear. And, and remember this too, when you got your spot, you don't need the best, most expensive gear. Don't get all tied up in, in that kind of stuff because you just need stuff to get your ideas out and, you know, especially these days, everything, you get clean recordings and stuff. But, yeah, look how he's got set up. He's got a little vocal thing over there with the, you know, little area. That's cool. I like that. It's really cool. Yeah, Matt, he's a singer-songwriter, producer. He's a DJ. He's born and raised in Memphis, Tennessee. Started playing music locally at the age of 14. And uh, I met him recently, um, I'd say about almost a year ago. And he's produced a handful of records from rock gospel to latin blues uh you can hear his solo music on all digital platforms all you gotta do is search for uh matthew uh, twinkie downing and uh he's played in a bunch of bands uh out of the memphis area like uh, debris nothing more 4d nutbush superstar and uh he's also a great producer he's this guy see you never know when you're looking at a, at a picture in an area of what people do He's a producer also. He's worked with a lot of great artists. He's done pr lots of production. Um, I'm going to just read a whole list of stuff. You know, uh, Nutbush Superstar, Pimps on Bikes, uh, Carlos Eco's self-titled EP, uh, Dal Saltine Dream. And he's also worked with Pitbull, Dallas Musicians, Every Mother's Nightmare, Frost Diamond, Manavelle, Cowboy Troy, CNN, Pauly Shore, and some of his movie scores. See, this guy's done a lot of stuff. And just by looking at this one picture, just imagine the work that he's done just at that one little area. That's off to you, brother Twinkie. Right on, man. Check him out. So uh, we'll get to the next person. Now, Jason Mooney. You ready, brother? Drummer, songwriter, lyricist. Songwriters Guild, session studio, metal, rock, country, thrash, and punk. He's from L.A. And he, check out his spot. So his spot right here is uh, what he's doing. He's remodeling his jam room so when you see where his drums are at and then you see the other side it's, it's not completely done yet but he's still out there you know sweating it out still out there hitting the skins and, and rocking out and he's played on a lot of people's stuff he's toured with a lot of people um check him out uh what's his facebook uh yeah facebook facebook.com jason dot mooney m-o-o-n-e-y dot nine four and once again i'm gonna leave links to everybody's uh thing down below it's pretty cool how these people send everything so who's up next let's see oh yeah look at all these pictures right here somebody jeff scott now i gotta talk about jeff scott for a minute as a young growing up guitar player probably 19 or 20 i met jeff in the tampa area he just came down from Jersey, and he was one of my guitar playing hero buddies. Go to his house, hang out all the time. Shoot, you know, just we're best friends. You know, playing guitar, playing guitar, and playing guitar. This guy plays everything, and you can see by these pictures and all this stuff, he's very passionate. And if you want to see some cool guitars, and probably these are just a few that are in these pictures. He's got so many cool guitars, so many cool guitars. Matter of fact, that flying V that I have. I got from him. I'll show it sometime. Also got a 77 Ibanez Les Paul from him. Lawsuit series. Got all these cool pictures. And he's very passionate about his music. You can see him playing on his YouTube page. I'm sorry, his uh, Facebook page all the time. Just shredding. He, he plays everything, note for note. I mean, he's just, the, he's one of my best friend guitar heroes, Jeff Scott. He's played in bands like Relentless, Nothing Fancy, Skinner Tribute Band with Tommy Rocks, 
Lefty with Kenny McGee, tons of different bands. So he's just a all around great player and one of my best friends. Jeff Scott, I love you, brother. Thanks for sending your pictures. Uh, look at all this cool stuff. Look at these guitars. Jesus. This is sick. I love you, man. These Les Pauls, and Tellys, and Strats, old Marshalls. Look at all that. And he's, this is like off the side of his living room. So you could tell a serious person when they have the whole deal set up right there. Ser and he's probably on the other side in his kitchen cooking up something because he cooks everything all the time, this guy. Love you, Jeff Scott. Appreciate you, man. Who's next? Oh, man. Here we go. Gino Giovanni. Got you, bro. Look at this guy's stuff. Let me t I got to tell you a story about Gino. So... As people are sending me this stuff, friends of mine, I'm like, yeah, cool, man, cool. So then Gino sends me something, and I'm like, dude, this is Gino sending me something. Let me tell you something about Gino. First of all, look at all these pictures of the studio. So look at all these, look at everything. Look so cool, and uh, things on the walls, and just like so, you know, so zen. Got his mojo working over there. Awesome, look at that. It's pretty cool, huh? So I'm going to be reading some stuff, because this guy... Look, man, Gino, he's the creator of Taptoon Music Cards, okay? That's like the newest way to distribute and share music while utilizing all of today's technology. You know, uh, when tapped or scanned by almost any cell phone on the planet, albums of beautiful songs can instantly be, instantly be played for the listener's enjoyment. <laughs> it's awesome. So there's these cards where you put your music on and you tap away at them, and uh, it's a great way to promote your, your band. These days, music is pretty much just a calling card. So if you have these cards, um, you could do special things with them, you know, hand them out at your shows, uh, do anything with them. They're, it's a great thing this guy invented. He's the creator of it. Not only that, bro, listen to this. He's also the guy at Brando Guitar Companies. Now, Brando Guitar Company is a spot where um, they, they make like raps on guitars, uh, make record and CD awards. They have like little ukuleles. They can put stuff on banjos, tambourines, even drumsticks, like like vintage microphone awards, DIY raps, everything. So picture like you, you send him a guitar and he raps something. Like if you're doing a benefit or if you're doing got a sponsored event or if even with your band on it, it's something that you can like maybe raffle off or give away. It's really cool promotional items that he has here at Brando Guitars. And like I said, I'm going to put the links to all these people's stuff down below. So make sure you check out Brando Guitars and also Tap Tunes Music Card. It's really cool. Look at his look at look at his his jams over there. Look at these guitars he's got. Bro, he's set up. I'm looking at him right now. He's, wow. He's got it all. Look at his desktop. Good for you, Gino. Keep rocking, brother. All right, who's next? All right, so here's the deal. Last but not least, there, and this pl plays in great with what I'm doing here for this episode. It's my buddy Bob Noxious, okay? Now, Bob Noxious, him and I go way back. You know, we played in a band called Headshock together. Uh, we did, an, like, an EP with that band. We opened up for Typo Negative and uh, I don't know, a few other bands. Sabotage, uh, Acid Bath, I believe. It's kind of like a hardcore meets rock meets metal kind of band. Um, it was really fun. Anyway, then we were in a band together um, called the Die, Bar, the Die Bar Stalkers. So we were together for like seven years with that. We did two albums. So Bob Knox, is, he is like another one of my best friends. He's got a punk band called Pig Pen. They've been around for, for a long time. Great. I mean, they play with everybody. Um, he's also got a, ba a band now, I think, Love Songs for Junkies also. And uh, he, like I said, he's played in a bunch of different bands. All around great guy. He's that guy. You know what I'm saying? Bob Knox is that guy. Now, here's how he ties in to this episode of Jam Rooms, Rehearsal Spaces, and Home Studios. Bob actually owns a place called Underground Sound Studios in Tampa Bay. So there, it's a private rehearsal room. And we're going to look at some of these pictures as I talk about it. It's a private rehearsal room. AC, full PA with monitors, guitar and bass rig. They do recording there, video production. It's like a podcast studio. Um, if you look at some of these pictures, it's a really cool spot, and it's open 24 hours. I mean, you, you can literally go there and do whatever you want to do. It's a really cool spot. Um, I don't want to say it's like an Airbnb, but I'm sure you, if you want to uh, rent it out for 
you know, block it out and, and get in there and do some stuff, you'll have a good time. He offers, I mean, if you look at some of these pictures, it's really cool what he's got in here. Green screen. I mean, when Bob does something, he does it right. He works for an audio video company too, so everything's wired correctly, I'm sure. You know, he's got it all set up. So think about it. And, you know, a lot of people, they don't have, you know, their own home studio. They don't have a spot. So these places where you can rent, um, you can get places like this all over the country, all over the world. So if you're in the Tampa Bay area, and uh, which is a cool spot. Let me tell you, there's a lot of people that come in and out of Tampa and uh, do a lot of cool things. This is the spot to go if you want to, you know, rehearse, record, even do a podcast uh, with their facility, do some green screen video stuff. I mean, if you look at these pictures, he's got it all set up, bro. He's all set up. Pretty damn cool, huh? Awesome, Bob. Love you, brother. All right, well, thanks to everybody. Take my glasses off. I'm sweating out here, my, my studio, home little garage studio in Florida. It's hot as hell. It's July right now. It's hard. It took me so long to make this episode. It's just so damn hot and so damn busy. So um, appreciate you stopping by once again. We had a great time doing this. Uh, these little videos, how to play in a band. The, the whole premise of it is taking the most important thing of playing in a band, which is performing on stage, right? And we're going to talk about everything else. So if you had a good time with this, please leave some comments below. Um, maybe some pictures of your, your spot where you create, you get together with your, your, uh, your band. Um, it's, a, it's a fun thing. Leave some comments below. Also, if you have any ideas of any future episodes, uh, any, any kind of topic we could talk about. Um, and if you have anything you can add to this, other people you know, like to know that stuff. And they, they get off on seeing these pictures. I'm sure everybody's going to enjoy it. And thanks again to everybody that sent their stuff in. I really appreciate it. Much love. All right, as we wrap this thing up, appreciate you once again stopping by. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Leave some comments and hit the like thing. It helps the algorithms. And I uh, want to thank today's sponsor once again, Blue Magic Strings, Blue Magic Music. Get yourself a set of these strings, whether you play acoustic guitar, bass, uh, blues, rock, metal, anything. These There's a set for you. Custom gauges, whatever you need. Go to their website and... Uh, I'll leave all the links below for everybody's website that was involved today. Appreciate you once again, Blue Magic. There you go. Look at that. Appreciate you. Thanks so much. Before we get going, uh, come back again for another episode. I don't know what the topic is going to be yet, but we're going to figure something out. And uh, before we go, I've got to shout out this T-shirt. Yep, my buddy Hot Rod Walt from the Psycho DeVilles from Atlanta, Georgia. Great rockabilly, psychobilly. Roots Rock, Hot Rod Walt, man. Let me tell you, this guy is one of my heroes also. Uh, we just did a show with them recently at the OCC Roadhouse in Clearwater. Had a great time with him. He's like a painter. This guy does everything, man. Do me a favor, check out Hot Rod Walt's website. I'm going to put it down below. And you should call him up and get one of these T-shirts too, man. It's pretty cool. Hot Rod Walt, keep on rocking, brother. Anyway, thanks again for stopping by. I'm Jeff Fatolo. Appreciate all the love. And I'll be looking for you at the next episode. And if you have any information you want to find out about my band, you can go to jeffvitola.com, T-shirts and all that stuff. You want to give me some support. And uh, we're going to hit the road now. I'm going to go sit in the air conditioning and kind of cool off here. Whew. Thanks again for stopping by. Remember, we're going to get together in these videos. We're going to think about, talk about, and figure out the best way to play in a band. Catch you next time.